Hi everybody! This is the second part of the mini tutorial on creating 3D asteroids or other rocks in Blender and using them in Godot engine. This time I will focus on the Godot engine, namely importing an already finished model into Godot and resolving subsequent issues. If you are interested in the modeling itself, I recommend watching the first part first. Now let's dive into Godot. Alright, let's just say that importing 3D models into Godot Engine isn't as straightforward as the official documentation suggests. Fortunately, I have some good news. The first is that there are at least partial solutions or workarounds for most issues. Secondly, the developers of Godot Engine are constantly improving the whole system, so there's a decent chance that in the future the advice in this video won't be necessary because Godot will handle everything for us. But until that happens, let's see how we can help ourselves. Before I start, I would like to go back to Blender for a moment and mention an important detail. As we can see here in the statistical data down in this, in this, uh, in this row, our asteroid is very detailed and contains several tens of thousands of faces, namely uh, something above 30,000 faces which could cause performance issues if we use it as an asset in a game and there are, say, 20 such asteroids appearing at the same time. Therefore, I will quickly show how we can reduce the number of faces without significantly compromising the overall appearance of the object. I select the asteroid by clicking on that and then open the modifier section in the lower right panel. This is this one with the wrench icon. I add a new modifier called Decimate. It is in the generate, generate category right here. Okay, uh, this, uh, this modifier has several parameters, but in this case we are only interested in one, ratio. When I click on it and drag the mouse to the left, I start reducing the value, uh, this value, and simultaneously the number of faces of the object. We can see face count here at 30,720, and now let's get it just below 1,000. So I click and drag to the left, and it is decreasing, and the quality of the asteroid model is decreasing as well, but this is something we uh, expected, just a little bit more. It still looks like an asteroid, right? 2012, okay, this one. 8,829, uh, which is a significant improvement. And when I just rotate the model, it still looks like a rock asteroid. So it's perfectly usable in the game as a game asset. Very well. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I will return to the original asteroid so that we can better observe various details in Godot. So I simply get rid of this modifier and we are back to 30,000 faces. So, how can we import a 3D model into Godot? Starting from version 4, Godot supports direct import of blend files, which is the native format of the scenes created in Blender. However, this feature is not enabled by default, and if you never set up this workflow, it is very likely that you will see this yellow warning when you launch the Godot editor. Blah blah blah, Blender file is enabled, blah, blah, blah. no Blender path is configured in editor settings. So it means that we need to open the editor menu and editor settings and find the Blender section. So we can simply type Blender and right here in the results let's click import and here it is, Blender 3 path. This is a bit confusing because it says Blender 3 uh, Blender 3, which might give the impression that Blender 4 won't work here. Rest assured, it does work. Perhaps the Godot developers could change this label to Blender 3 Plus Path, for instance. So, I click on this icon and navigate to the directory where Blender is installed. And since I don't remember that, because I have it in... Uh, 
in Steam. Let's find out. So where is this? B -b 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 Blender, and I right click, manage and browse local files, and it opens the Blender folder, which I simply copy the address and get back to Godot, and I will just paste it here. Great, and I am inside the folder. Uh, by the way, it's important to select a folder that contains a blender.exe file, not uh, any subfolders with the version numbers. So this is correct. I'll click select folder, current folder, and Godot will ask to restart the editor. So let's do it. Save and restart. Let's wait for it. And upon restarting, we should no longer see the original warning. Yeah, it's gone. Now we can find the asteroid.blend file that we created in the first part of the tutorial and drag it into Godot. I think it is right here. Yeah, select it, so I'll drag it to the modules folder of my uh, project. Let's wait. Okay, and right away we can see that Godot doesn't like something. It cannot find the textures used in the material. That's why there is and there are plenty of errors like file not found and it expects to find it in this uh, absolute path which I created on uh, on my disk so um, we can resolve it somehow and it can be resolved in two basic ways one solution would be to manually create the folder that Godot expects and copy all the necessary textures into it it would have to be in the res uh, file space which means we would have to right click and create downloads and this long directory and so on uh, yeah this approach can be good if we are done with the material and only want to change the topology of our model in blender however if we plan to make complex modifications to the model in blender it might be better to use the second solution and set blender to save all textures within the blend file in the file menu if i switch back to blender okay i already um, turned it off so let's get back to the asteroid blend this is our scene and in the file menu let's find external data and click on pack resources or we can directly set it to automatically pack resources but let's do it this way pack resources and save Control s and now when i get back to uh, my folder uh, it's not here let's refresh we can see that the uh, size is much bigger now it's over 10 megabytes but it was only two megabytes before that's because this file already contains the textures so if we enter uh, if we drag it to Godot again and I think I better delete this file first so delete and and I'll just delete these error messages and drag the file uh, again into the modules folder let's wait for it okay so what happened the import completed but we see plenty of errors in the console again these messages confirm that the importing blend files actually converts them to gltf format like we can see from this message structure and <coughs> then imports that and also that godot has some issues with importing textures this is a bit strange because in the file system panel we can see that a texture subfolder has been automatically created and it contains all our textures we use for the asteroid material. Even stranger is that when I double click on the model in the file system, right here, it is displayed with the textures. Although the mapping is not correct, but still it is better than before. But if I drag it to a 3D editor, it is still white with no textures. Okay, so what's going on here? Clearly, this process isn't entirely smooth in Godot, but fortunately, there is a simple workaround. Just right click on this model and select reimport. Okay, wait, wait, wait. And now there are no, no uh, errors at all. And if I drag it to the 3D scene again, it should be correct. Well, almost, but at least there are the textures and the rest of the material. 
Okay, so let's create a scene from this by right-clicking and creating a new inherited scene. It should be there, let's switch to 3D model, and here it is. However, our troubles don't end here because, as you can see, we feel that something is wrong with the material, and if we want to adjust this material further, which is in this Mesh Instance 3D called Rock, and click on the mesh instant uh, mesh and find the material which is on the surface zero we will find that it's not possible because all properties are read only it's not possible to change them so what now well godot doesn't give us much help here uh, to be precise it doesn't give us any explanation at all as to why we can't edit the material that was successfully imported into the scene so we have to figure it out ourselves. And the first thing that might come to mind is to click on the scene icon right here next to the root mode. When we do this, Godot displays a dialog with a description that is again completely useless as it recommends creating a new inherited scene from our scene. But that's what we uh, did at the beginning, right? So what happens if we select this option? Let's select it and the very same scene opened in the next tab and we are back where we started. <clears throat> if we click on the same icon again, the same dialog will appear and so on and so on. It can go on indefinitely. All right, this is not the way to go. Let's delete these tabs and try something else. So I click this icon again and the second option is open anyway. When we do this, a new tab opens with our scene and this time we can edit the materials. Let's uh, try it here and here, surface and click and everything is uh, not disabled anymore. We can change it. But beware, in the inspector a warning suddenly appeared. Changes may be lost, which isn't exactly encouraging. Clicking on it, Godot shows us another notification with zero added value. Blah blah blah, please read the documentation, instantiation, yeah. Okay, the issue is that we are actually editing the original blend scene right here, while Godot works with TSCN scenes. Here's an option, we can use scene and save as, save scene as, and now it offers us <coughs> to save the asteroid TSCN with the correct format. So uh, let's try it. I will just do it not in models, but in the scenes right here, or I don't have, yeah, I do. Scenes and asteroid, save. Okay, the warning may still appear, but if I close this tab with the asteroid and reopen it, now it should be it should be here in the scenes asteroid we have the asteroid with the uh, with the material there is no warning anymore and the material is editable great and finally let's just close that finally there is one more option that most developers will probably prefer for each mesh instance 3d we have only one there you need to set its mesh and material to unique. Here's how to do it. Let's find it in the uh, inspector. And we have mesh here. So first click this arrow and find make unique. And now in the surface zero, there is the material. And again, click this arrow and make unique. Okay, and we can see everything is editable. So let's try to fix the texture and we fix it by enabling triplanar in the UV1 section on and now it looks exactly like it did in Blender before. So why is that? You may remember from the first part of this mini tutorial that we created our asteroid not with UV mapping but object mapping which means that the UV map wasn't created at all and Godot doesn't know how to map the textures on the mesh. However, I supposed it would automatically use the triplanar uh, mapping on, uh, but I think there is an open issue in the Godot GitHub which says that triplanar mapping is stretched if mesh has no UVs and this issue is scheduled to be fixed in Godot uh, 4.3. So perhaps next time it should work as 
uh, we expect. If not, there's always this workaround to turn it on manually. By the way, direct import of blend files of this one isn't the only way to get a 3D model into Godot engine. It's possible that we acquire assets for, for our game directly, whether by downloading free assets or purchasing a professional asset pack, and such models will be available in different formats. Godot supports several formats with varying levels of import reliability, and among the most common are probably GLTF 2.0 and FBX. As for GLTF 2.0, it is directly recommended in the official documentation, and if you followed my tutorial on creating a space shooter, you probably noticed that I exported all models from Blender into this format. The advantage is that the resulting GLB file includes all textures, which upon import into Godot are unpacked into the same folder as the model itself. Therefore, Godot usually has no problem importing the entire scene on the first attempt. I use this format most often, not only for 3D, <laughs> not only for 3D objects, but also for animation libraries, which allows me to share animations among different models in the game. The FBX format is still very popular, and it's worth having the capability to use it in a game engine. In Godot, which lacks native support for importing FBX, it's currently necessary to use an external tool like FBX to GLTF, which has its pros and cons, or import FBX into Blender and export it as GLTF 2.0. However, with the arrival of Godot <coughs> 4.3, which is in beta at the time of recording this video, Godot should use a more reliable open source library called UFBX, making the whole process significantly easier. Thank you for watching. I sincerely hope that this video will become obsolete over time, because Godot will improve its handling of 3D models and scenes to the extent that no secret techniques or hidden workarounds will be needed. However, until that happens, it's useful to have these facts available, and hopefully it has been helpful to you as well. Anyway, I wish you much success with your projects, take care and see you in the next video.